Hi there friends and welcome. It dawned on me recently that even though I've done a boatload of videos focusing on makeup techniques, for those of us with mature skin, I've never specifically focused on a subject which is really crucial to creating a beautiful, flawless makeup look. The actual application techniques that we use to apply that makeup to create that flawless look. After all, we can have a fantastic product with a great formula, but if the application method we use doesn't quite work for that product, we definitely won't look our best. So hold tight, we'll explore this topic in just a wink of the eye. But first, let me take a moment to welcome all of you and thank you for joining me today. Whether you're new to this channel or returning, I know you have lots of other things that you could be doing with your time. So I really appreciate your being with me. For those of you who are new, my name is Elise and I'm a professional makeup artist who strongly believes that as we get older, we become even more beautiful. But unfortunately, as we get older, we often feel less beautiful. I love seeing us go from good to gorgeous because it does feel good to look good. So my mission and passion is helping those of us with mature skin look our best and feel more confident. So if this mission resonates with you, I hope you'll subscribe before you leave today. And many thanks if you decide to do so. So now on to the subject of today's video, makeup application techniques that can help us look flawless every time we apply our makeup. And today's focus will be on face makeup application techniques for foundation, contour, blush, and highlighter. Before we apply any makeup at all, Every makeup artist will tell you that prepping the skin is absolutely key. Think of it as being similar to an artist who needs to prep a canvas before applying paint. Every artist knows that this step is crucial since it helps achieve even consistent blendable results. So just like an artist prepping a canvas before painting, prepping our skin not only ensures that our makeup products reach their full potential and look their best, but it also helps the makeup stay put and last longer. In addition, it ensures that our skin is all one texture, so our makeup applies smoothly and evenly. So always cleanse, exfoliate twice a week unless you have very sensitive skin, and apply your favorite serums and moisturizer before applying makeup. Today, we'll be focusing on cream and liquid products since they melt into the skin and really blend well with other complexion products. And since most of us have skin that gets drier as we get older, cream and liquid products can definitely be the most flattering on us since powder formulas can emphasize dryness. If you do have oily skin, sometimes you can use cream or liquid products if you apply powder over them. So there are basically seven different ways that we can apply makeup. We're most familiar with the first four. We can apply makeup with our fingers, with a brush or with a sponge, or directly from the applicator if we have a cream stick product. Three additional ways of applying our makeup include putting the product on the back of our hand and then picking it up with a brush and applying it, or putting it on the back of the hand, adding some moisturizer, and then picking it up with a brush or applying it to the back of the hand and then rubbing it with our fingers to warm it up and then applying it with our fingers. So at this point, you might be wondering, so how do I know which of these application methods is best to use? Well, this is an excellent question and it basically depends on five things. First, the formula of the product. Second, how pigmented the product is. Third, what kind of look you're most comfortable with. For example, a softer look or a more dramatic look or a bolder look. Fourth, what products you're applying the product over, if any. And fifth, how heavy or light-handed you are when applying products. And that differs for all of us. So I think it might be helpful to demonstrate some of these application techniques based on the formula of the product, how pigmented the product is, the kind of look we want, and what products we'll be applying the product over. Foundation is first. I'm going to apply my Clinique Even Better foundation. I'll dot it on with my fingers and then use my brush to blend it in on one side and use my dampened sponge to blend it in on the other side. Now, you certainly can just use your fingers, which results in a quick and natural application, but I just personally prefer using a brush or a sponge. 
Brushes are great, especially for fuller coverage foundations, and a buffing brush is best since it really melds the foundation into the skin. Other types of brushes can create streaks, which is definitely not a look that we want. Applying foundation with a sponge creates a beautiful, flawless finish and can also be used to shear out a fuller coverage foundation. For instance, I'll sometimes wear Clinique's Beyond Perfecting Foundation, which has a much fuller coverage. So I'll often use a sponge to apply the Beyond Perfecting Foundation just so I can shear it out a bit. And of course, you can always combine application methods. I'll often buff foundation with a brush and then go over it with a dampened sponge if I want a really flawless look. It's always a good idea to just dot on a few drops of foundation in the center of the face first because that's where most of us have more redness or discoloration. So I just realized I'm really low on my even better foundation, so I'm going to switch to a combination of foundations that I also love wearing. I'm going to mix my Catrice True Skin Foundation with my Age Perfect Serum Foundation from L'Oreal. So I'm just going to dot this on, especially in the area where I have more redness, and then I'll blend it in on one side with my brush and on the other side with my sponge. I really love this combination because the Catrice Foundation is more skin-like, and then the L'Oreal Age Perfect Foundation has a little bit of a glow to it. So I want to bring it down here. Now I'm taking my Real Technique sponge. I'm going to put a little bit of the foundation on the sponge, tap it off, and then tap on the rest of the foundation on the other side of my face. So this is the motion you want to use with a sponge. It's pouncing or I don't know what other term to use. Pushing it, pouncing it. <laughs> You don't want to rub. And bring it down here. So let's take a moment to look at both sides of my face to check out what the foundation looks like on the side of my face where I applied it with a brush, and then the side where I applied it with my sponge. So here is the brush side. And here is the sponge side. Looking more closely in my mirror, they look pretty similar, but frankly, when I do some editing, I'll probably be able to see some differences between the two sides. And I hope you'll let me know in the comment section which side you like better. Now, quite honestly, since every makeup product has a different combination of ingredients and is formulated differently, sometimes it really is important to just test several different application techniques to see which one works the best with that particular product. I have some foundations that absolutely look better when I apply them with a sponge, and some that definitely look better when I use my brush to apply them. Let's now move on to contour. I'll be demonstrating application techniques with KVD's Liquid Contour, ELF's Cream Contour, and Fenty Beauty's Contour. Since liquid products can be a bit tricky to apply directly to the face, since they can drip, run, or go on unevenly, I'm going to put some of this liquid contour on the back of my hand. Then I could pick this KVD contour up with either a stippling brush or a sponge. I'm going to use the stippling brush so you can see how this type of brush works. And in case you're not familiar with stippling brushes, they typically have two sets of bristles and a blunt edge. Here's an example of my e.l.f. stippling brush. The white synthetic bristles pick up the product and apply it to the skin, while the black bristles, which are sometimes natural bristles, are at the base of the brush, and they're denser and help push the product into the skin. This type of brush not only helps blend the product in well, but it also helps to prevent the makeup underneath from being disturbed. So I'm going to go ahead and apply it. So this is what the applicator looks like on the KVD product. And I'm just applying some on the back of my hand. And you can see it's pretty thin and sheer. So I'm going to mix the stippling brush around in the product. So I've pretty much put most of that product on the brush. And then I'm just going to dot it on. As you can see, this application really applies just a very small amount, which is buildable. 
It also doesn't create any harsh lines or streaks. So it's a very natural looking application. And that's because I basically sheared it out by putting it on my hand and then putting it on the brush. On the other side of my face, I'm going to apply the e.l.f. Cream Contour. Since this product is very creamy and applies very easily, I'm going to apply it directly to my face. If this product happened to be stiffer and not so creamy, I would most likely put it on the back of my hand and pick it up with either a brush or a sponge. I could use either a stippling brush or a sponge to blend this e.l.f. product in, but I'm going to go ahead and use a sponge this time. And here's what the e.l.f. Cream Contour Palette looks like. I'm going to combine the two darker colors at the bottom. And I'm just going to apply it with my finger, as you can see. And you can see, since I'm applying it directly from the applicator, it goes on much stronger. And then I'm taking my sponge and I'm just pouncing it on over so I blend it in and get a softer look. And you can see what a great job the sponge does. And there we have the look blended in with the sponge. The next product is a cream contour that is in stick form, Fenty Beauty's Match Stick Contour in Amber. Since stick formulas typically apply a greater amount of product if applied directly to the skin and have stiffer formulas, they often require quite a bit of blending if applied directly to the skin from the applicator. So I usually like to either put some on my arm and then pick it up with a stippling brush to apply it, or put some on my arm, mix in a little moisturizer with it to make the formula less stiff and easier to blend out, and then pick it up with a brush or a sponge to apply it. I'll first apply the contour stick directly to my arm and blend out with a brush. This is what the contour looks like by itself. It definitely has a much stiffer application feel. Then I'm taking this sculpting brush from Real Techniques and blending it out. And here's what it looked like blended out. The brush did a really excellent job. Next, I'm going to demonstrate what the Fenty Stick product looks like when I apply it directly to my arm, right from the applicator, and then pick it up with a stippling brush. So this is what it looks like directly from the applicator, and here's what it looks like blended out with a stippling brush. I think the stippling brush really helps diffuse it a little bit more. Now I'm going to take the same contour from Fenty, put it directly on my arm, and add some moisturizer, and then pick it up with a dampened sponge. So once again, here's what it looks like directly applied to my arm. Then I'm going to mix a little bit of my Clinique 72 Hour Moisturizer with it. I don't know how well this is showing up, but the moisturizer definitely shears it out. And now I'm going to take a dampened sponge and pounce it a little bit, and we'll see how that looks. As you can see, the dampened sponge did shear it out, but not as much as using the moisturizer with it. Let's look at some blush products next and determine the best application techniques for them. I have two liquid blushes that are very different. Rare Beauty's Liquid Blush, which is very pigmented, and Daniel Sandler's Liquid Blush, which is not as highly pigmented. Let me show you what each of them looks like. This is the Rare Beauty Liquid Blush in Encourage. This is just one swatch of the product on my arm, and you can see how highly pigmented it is. And this is the Daniel Sandler product. And here is a Daniel Sandler product. You can see how extremely sheer that is. So we would definitely want to apply these in different ways. Because the Rare Beauty blush is so highly pigmented, I'd most likely end up with way too much blush if I applied it directly to my face with the applicator. So instead, I'm going to diffuse it on my arm using a dampened sponge. The sponge will sheer it out even more than a brush would just using the sponge to apply it. As you can see, I'm just getting a little bit of the color this way. It's really a nice, soft application method. Now, just for the fun of it, I'm going to take a direct drop of this blush from the bottle applicator and put it on the cheek, and you'll see what a difference it makes. Wow. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to try and blend that out. And I'm going to use the sponge. And it's going to take me quite a bit longer because I really have to blend this out. And we did get it to blend out, but it is a little bit stronger, and it did take me a little bit longer to blend it out. Since Daniel Sandler's product is not as pigmented, I'm going to go ahead and use the application method that Daniel Sandler recommends. I'm going to put one drop on a brush and then apply. If I want to build it up further, I can certainly go back in and apply a second drop. 
I'm going to apply it onto this stippling brush. And I removed the blush on this side and reapplied foundation. So we'll be working on a side of my face that does not have any blush on it. So I applied just one drop to the brush. Oh wow, this is really nice. Just get a really soft flush and it just looks so natural. And I'm going to apply one more drop, just build it up a little. I just ordered two more blushes from Daniel Sandler because I really love them so much and I'll definitely show them to you when I get them. And there's a really soft flush I got with a Daniel Sandler liquid blush. And I'm just going to build it up a little bit more. It's not coming across very well under these lights, but when I look at it in the mirror, it really is a nice soft flush and I can see it probably better than you can see it. Next, let's test two other formulas. Flower Beauty's Blush Bomb, which is a gel formula, and Rare Beauty's Stay Vulnerable Cream formula. These are going to go on the back of my arm so you can take a look at how pigmented they are first and what the formula is like. Then we can decide what application technique to use. I definitely want a softer, more natural look rather than a stronger blush look. So let's check out how pigmented these two formulas are. This is the Flower Beauty Blush Balm in Bubbly. And here's what it looks like when I sheer it out with my finger. And this is the Rare Beauty Nearly Neutral Blush. I actually put two swatches on there so you can see that it really is quite sheer. The Rare Beauty Stay Vulnerable Cream is not quite as pigmented as the Flower Beauty Blush. So I would use a denser brush to apply the Rare Beauty Stay Vulnerable Blush since the denser brush would pick up more product. Since the Flower Beauty Blush is more highly pigmented, I could pick it up with a stippling brush from the back of my hand or if I want an even softer look, I could pick it up with a sponge from the back of my hand. For highlighters, I have a liquid, one stick, a cream, and a cream to powder formula. Let's take a look at how pigmented each of these products is. I'm first going to apply this Rare Beauty liquid highlighter in the color Enchant. And here's what it looks like. Above it, I'm going to apply this Merit Stick highlighter. This is in the color Kava. As you can see, the Merit Stick product is a much softer look. Above the Merit product, I'm applying the RMS Luminizer, which is a cream. Then I'm taking this cream to powder formula from Laura Geller called Portofino and applying it also. This is the RMS cream and then the Portofino, which is a cream to powder, is right above it. The most pigmented formula, as you saw, is the Rare Beauty Liquid Luminizer. Because it is the most pigmented, I'm going to go ahead and apply some on the back of my arm, pick it up with a sponge, and apply it to one side of my face. And I'm just going to apply it. Ooh, it's really still, even with a sponge, it's pretty strong. As you can see, there's quite a glow. I could sheer it out even more, however, by pouncing the sponge on it a bit more. On the other side of my face, I'm going to directly dot onto my skin the Merit Stick Highlighter since it's not as pigmented. And then I'll tap it in with my fingers. So I like to swirl it around a bit to warm it up and that makes it apply even easier. And then I'm just going to dot it on. And as I think you can see, this is a softer glow than the Rare Beauty Liquid Highlighter. The RMS Cream Highlighter has about the same amount of pigmentation as the Merit Stick, so I'd apply it directly onto my cheekbone with my fingers, as I did with the Merit product. But what's most interesting is the Portofino Cream to Powder formula, because the application method makes a huge difference in the amount of highlight that this product will give to the skin. If we use a soft, fluffy brush, we'll get a soft, light application. And I'm going to apply the Laura Geller product on my arm using the fluffy brush. So here's what it looks like using the fluffy brush. I'm not even sure if you're going to be able to see it. But if we use a paddle brush like this one, we'll get a much stronger highlight. And here is where I applied it with the paddle brush. 
It's not showing up that much on my arm, but believe me, when I apply it to my cheeks, using that paddle brush makes a huge difference in how strong the highlighter looks. So as we've seen in these demonstrations today, dents or paddle brushes can pick up and apply more product, which creates a stronger look, and fluffier brushes pick up less product, which creates a softer look. Picking products up from the back of the hand with a brush or a sponge can help soften the look of a more highly pigmented product like a stick contour or a blush. And using a sponge to pick up a product or adding a bit of moisturizer to the product tends to share out the product even more than using a brush, since the slight dampness tends to dilute the product. As we saw in the last demonstration with a Portofino highlighter, it's always a good idea to test various application methods for each face product so you can determine which method gives you the look that you prefer. I hope you found this video helpful, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with a friend. And in the comments section below, I'd love to know your favorite blush and your favorite application method with that blush. And since some of you have asked how to receive my weekly newsletter, let me just mention that all you need to do is drop me a note at boomerandbeyondbeauty at gmail.com and I'll make sure that you'll receive the newsletter each week. Until next time, I wish you wonderful health and happiness and hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. Take care.